I can't tie my shoes. I can't bend down and put on my socks. Um, like I can't sit on the floor unless there's something around me to help me get up. Uh, I can't run. I can't play any sports. But other than that, I got used to it. At 18 years of age, Nakisha Ray has suffered more pain and debilitation than some of us experience in a lifetime. When I was born, I had sickle cell. And then when I was two, I had to get my spleen removed. Then at uh, 14, I was diagnosed with leukemia. Along with that, I started to develop a vascular necrosis. It was the painful blood disease, sickle cell anemia, that led to the condition called a vascular necrosis. When I met Nikisha, that condition was especially destroying her hip joints. A vascular necrosis occurs when blood vessels become blocked, cutting off a bone's blood supply. Without the blood, the bone begins to deteriorate and finally dies. But thanks to the orthopedic surgery team at the DMC's Children's Hospital of Michigan, Nikisha is enjoying a vastly improved quality of life with two new artificial hips. Dr. Richard Reynolds, Chief of Orthopedic Surgery at Children's Hospital of Michigan, explains. In the hip joint, particularly the ball of the hip joint, the blood vessels that support that bone are very, they're, they're so-called end arteries, meaning that they, they go in and they don't go anywhere else. So when the sickle cell create that problem with clogging up the vessels. The whole vessel gets clotted and then no more blood gets to that bone, so it dies. As the dead bone tissue moves in the socket, the ball of the joint wears down quickly. It's the shape becomes out of round. So then because we have that so-called square peg in a round hole, those surfaces are starting to scrape away the cartilage inside the hip joint and it only fits in a certain direction, so it prevents certain ranges of motion, and that's why she can't bend over to pick up her or to tie her shoes. The only fix for Nakisha was a double total hip replacement. Due to her sickle cell condition, she received a blood transfusion to reduce the number of abnormal blood cells in her system. We admit them the night before and uh, actually make sure that they've got lots of fluid so they don't get dehydrated. And all those things can create a, a sickle cell crisis, so that's why we're trying to control these things. During the surgery, Dr. Reynolds essentially disassembles Nakisha's hip joint. He implants an artificial socket in her pelvis, and removing the damaged bone, attaches an artificial ball to the top of her leg. This creates an artificial joint that behaves very much like a natural one. Can you see how it moves nice and smoothly? So now the hip flexes up to 90 degrees. It extends out straight. It externally rotates. And all of her pain will be gone. So we're done. Now we're just gonna close up everything. We're gonna make it so you didn't even know we were here. Having completed one side, Dr. Reynolds successfully repeats the same procedure on Nakisha's other leg. After the surgery, we talked about recovery. Only after 24 to 48 hours, we'll start getting her up uh, at bedside, standing with uh, a walker. And then with the next uh, 72 hours plus, we'll be getting her to walk. It takes about six weeks for everything to heal in place to stabilize the replacements we put in. Dr. Reynolds says a full recovery normally takes six to nine months, depending on how diligently the patient exercises. When we returned to check Nakisha's progress after just three months, we found her doing extremely well and, most importantly, pain-free. I can put on my own socks. I can put on my own shoes. It's not difficult for me to put on my pants or anything. I mean, I'm still learning how to balance and stuff, but it's getting better. Dr. Reynolds is also pleased with her progress. Pain, gone. No pain. No waking up at night. No. Okay. Um, you're walking pretty well for this stage of the game. So that um, the little limp that she has, where she kind of goes side to side, that's because the muscles at the side of the hip are still weak. So what we're really trying to do is 
get this muscle stronger. As soon as this muscle gets stronger, the limp goes away. Just two months later, we caught up with Nikisha in this culinary arts class at the Art Institute of Michigan in Novi. She told us she feels great and loves her classes. It's fun. I have two regular classes where we just learn about uh, like the concepts of cooking and sanitation of how you're supposed to keep the foods and everything. Then I have a lab where we actually cook the foods that we learn about. Nikisha has no problem working on her feet for up to five hours in class, and she's decided to pursue her dream. After I leave culinary school, I want to get an internship uh, with the caterer because I want to be a caterer. I, have, I want to have my own catering business. And about the doctor who restored her future, she had this to say. He's a great doctor. He is. If you'd like more information on pediatric orthopedic surgery, or to schedule an appointment with Dr. Richard Reynolds and the orthopedic team at Children's Hospital of Michigan, visit us here at dmc.org. The DMC, we just think it's a better way to get better. I'm Emory King.